Hi, I'm Bill, the knee pain guru, the best in the world at eliminating chronic knee pain without drugs, shots, or surgery. Today, we're going to go over the three most important steps to take after knee arthroscopy. Before we get into um, those three most important steps after getting your knee scoped or arthroscopic knee surgery, uh, is uh, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping without drug shots or surgery. Oh boy. Today, we're going to go over the three most important steps to take after knee Okay, that was um, that was me getting the uh, Google <laughs> Hangout feedback delay. Okay, I'm going to do a little housekeeping first, um, and then we're going to get in, into the the topic of today. Those uh, three most important steps to address after uh, knee arthroscopy. And there's, there's a couple of topics that I want to talk about uh, first. And one was a question I got from a gentleman this past week who wanted an answer whether my program could help him when his knee was piv when he was pivoting. He had a, a torn meniscus in his knee, and he was adamant about not wanting to speak with me until he knew my program could help him um, with the he, he was a, a pickleball player. And this is really kind of important that not all situations with knee pain have this blanket like this is what you do, step A, step B, step C, step D, and then you're out of pain. Many times there's like layers. It's kind of like um, undoing a, um, a knotted ball of yarn. And if we don't do the, the – not the ball of yarn in the right order, you're really not going to see any changes. So I was uh, attempting to share it with this gentleman that there are layers, especially if you have something broken or torn in the knee. So it's just something to consider when uh, sending in a question that you have to understand that not all knee pain is the same. It's unique there are fundamental principles of it that are the same, but each each situation can be very unique. Uh, the motivation for today's call was for two people that I interacted with over the past week. One was a client. Her name is Olga. And Olga is originally from the Ukraine. And she just had arthroscopic knee surgery. She had a torn meniscus in her knee. And we had been working together for a couple of months, not knowing that the meniscus was torn. So we had a situation where the knee was not mechanically sound, and we were uh, progressing and working and getting her out of pain, but then she'd move a certain way, and then she'd be right back into pain. And this is really crucial to understand in working with uh, the Knee Pain Guru program or the Knee Pain Guru process that we have to make sure the knee is mechanically sound. You have to go to your doctor, make sure nothing is broken or torn. Because once we understand that nothing is broken or torn, then we're able to move forward on a solid foundation. Another a gentleman that I spoke with, this his name was Frank, and I met him actually locally here in Asheville, North Carolina. I met him at a local grocery store called Earth Fair. And uh, Frank came up to me and he's like, are, are you the knee pain guru? And I was like, yeah. And um, he went to explain to me that he'd been following me for the good portion of this year. And he has a torn meniscus in his knee. And he's looking for alternative approaches that he didn't want to have surgery. And he was looking for something solid as far as moving forward without having to have a knee arthroscopy or a knee um, uh, arthroscopic knee surgery where they they clip they'll clip the um, the the torn meniscus so I was talking with Frank and it was it was a really great conversation and I was I was actually surprised because uh, the number of 
people that uh, I'd run into, especially in Nashville, North Carolina. Uh, so it was a great conversation with him, and he gave me some really great feedback. One of them was that until meeting me, I didn't seem real. Like my message is really strong, and I have a good, solid approach to what I'm talking about. However, before he met me in person, there didn't seem to be like this believability about what I'm sharing, which if, if that's all we need to do is meet me in person and we're good to go, then that's great. Because I did share with Frank that I'm in the process in the, um, in the middle of March here in Asheville, North Carolina, uh, 14th and 15th, that I'll be having the first live event focused strictly around um, alleviating knee pain in the body. So that's definitely something that you want to keep in mind and pay attention to. I got another email from um, a client, and she was sharing with me back in uh, 2012, she was diagnosed with a completely torn ACL ligament in her knee. And it's two years later, and she got another MRI, like very specific about uh, the type of MRI that she got, and realized that that torn ligament reattached. So I was like really jazzed about that because you'll have a lot of um, conventional thinking, conventional approaches that'll say, eh, torn meniscus can't heal, torn tendons and ligaments can't heal, um, damaged cartilage, like if you have bone on bone or arthritis, it can't heal. And it's just a matter of time where the, the body will just degenerate and you'll need to have a knee replacement surgery. And it's so awesome they have someone that had a before and an after of what was going on with their knee that it's real solid, like medically proven with MRIs that the ligament was torn. She did nothing as far as just eating healthy and doing a, uh, implementing a lot of the principles in my program and the ligament reattached. So it really reinforces the fact that the body does have the infinite capacity to heal. And it's something that's that's so exciting and I'm so jazzed about. So uh, definitely keep, keep that in mind um, as you're moving forward through your process. Because getting out of knee pain definitely is a process. I read a quote last night. I, I woke up. It was about 1.30 in the morning. Couldn't sleep. And I was reading in, in a book. Uh, it was actually a business book, but I came across this quote that I believe is so applicable for someone experiencing knee pain. And the quote is, you can go to the ocean with a teaspoon or a bucket. The ocean doesn't care. So how does that apply to knee pain? Well, I saw it directly applicable with the attitude that people go with what they believe the body is capable of doing. And what I see most people with knee pain going to their body with is a teaspoon. They believe they can only get so much out of their body. And I believe if we shift that perspective where we're going to the body with a bucket and the body's going to give us this return that, that it, it's very, very capable of healing itself. It's more capable than we can ever imagine. And I believe our beliefs play a, a key role in that. We have to support the conditions in our body for our body to heal. But the belief has to be there first in order for those conditions to be set up for the body to heal. So go over that quote again. You can go to the ocean with a teaspoon or a bucket. The ocean doesn't care. In the same respect, you can go to the body with a teaspoon or a bucket. And the body doesn't care. So if we go to the body with a bucket, with this huge amount of belief that it can heal, we just need to understand how it can do so. So now we're going to get into the topic of today, which is the three most important steps to take after knee arthroscopy. And many of the clients that I work with have these types of challenges with their knees. 
they, they have difficulty bending or straightening the knee. Uh, in, they want to increase mobility. They want to increase strength. And the ch that's the challenge that they're running into post-surgery, post-arthroscopy. And even though there's only a couple of like very tiny like pen-sized holes in their knee, when the doctor went in there to repair the the torn uh, the uh, torn meniscus, it can still create this experience of trauma in the body where the body tenses up. The body's protecting itself from the initial injury and now with the surgery. So we have difficulty bending and straightening a knee and with the decreased mobility and the decreased strength in the knee. We don't have full flexion and extension of the knee. And there, there's a lot of hesitation. It's like you don't want to take that step. You don't know if it's going to hurt. You don't know how you could move. Um, and there's also a fear of the pain getting worse. That we get in our head about, well, well I'm going to move this way or I'm going to move that way. And it's not only going to hurt at that step, but it's also going to hurt afterwards. That's something that I heard from Olga this past week, that she exercised and it felt good then, but there was lots of pain afterwards. So it makes you get into this place where you're always thinking about your knee. There's always this, it's like a black cloud over your head that this pain in your knee is always going to be there. So how what is the strategy the conventional strategy for alleviating the pain in the knee increasing uh, mobility and strength in the knee post-surgery and generally that involves uh, maybe like Tylenol Advil Nuprin uh, prescription drugs you could have creams or gels that you could put topically on the knee and you could also uh, there's physical therapy and there's also the strategy of waiting it out. And I want to go through each of those and talk about kind of the, the pros and the cons of what the conventional approach is looking at and then go into some of the alternatives that we can look at that I believe that I get more leverage on the body, speeding up the body's ability to recover. So the first one is prescription. Um, is uh, like Tylenol, Advil, Nuprin, and more of your lighter versions of the prescription drugs. That these are the types of things that'll just kind of take the edge off of the pain. Um, it's not uh, something as heavy as a prescription drug. However, the function of both of them are the same. They, the idea with it is they want to essentially suppress or quiet down the pain receptors that are sending a signal to your brain that you have pain. When we quiet that down, this gives the nervous system an opportunity to begin to heal, to begin to, it stops that, that um, endless loop that goes between the knee and the head in the knee, in the head, and you have all this pain, and you can't think about anything else. So if we quiet that signal down, there's the opportunity for that signal to stop in it, in the body to begin to heal, which is great for a short-term strategy, for a short period of time, maybe a couple of weeks. But anytime you get into a situation longer than that, where you're still experiencing pain and you're using prescription drugs, or Tylenol, Advil, Nuprin to suppress the, the signals from your body, one is that you're really taxing your organs. Those chemicals are synthetic, which means uh, most of them are petroleum-based. So these chemicals, it's like it, it's, it's taxing your organs. It's essentially polluting your system in a way that for a short period of time, it may not be that big of a deal, but if you're looking at it for a long-term strategy, not only if it's not working, you're still in pain, but you're also building up toxins in your body that is not necessarily in your best interests for having a, um, a 
a, a longevity of your life. So that's something really to consider when you're looking at um, Tylenol, Advil, Nuprin, prescription drugs, and, and approaches like that where you're taking pills to numb the pain in your knee. The other approach is creams or gels. And these are these function in a, in a similar capacity to numb the pain in the knee or bring blood flow to that area in the knee when it's experiencing pain. And very much the same way as the prescription drugs, Tylenol, Advil, Nuprin, in a short-term approach, that can be beneficial. That can be helpful. Um, you have uh, Tiger Balm. There's Ben Gay. There's a, a, a whole host of different uh, liniments and oils and gels and creams and things like that to put topically on the knee. Uh, once again, my concern is the toxicity of those products. Many times if you go to the, the local grocery store or the, uh, the drug store, you're, a lot of those products are, are synthetic chemicals and it makes it very difficult mm -hmm for the body to heal itself when it has all of these chemicals in it. Um, I know, I know for, for me personally, it, it never worked. Um, so that, that's uh, something to, very much something to consider in terms of how we're, we're going to approach the body. Um, in the way I look at it, it needs to be very much long term. Am I going to be able to sustain this process? Am I going to be able to, when I'm uh, 50, 60, 70 years old, is this going to continue to work and support my body to be healthy, strong, vibrant, uh, where I feel good? Another approach is physical therapy. And that was something after my knee surgery, I had a reconstructive ACL surgery on the ligament in my left knee. And while they were in there, they took out two pieces of meniscus. They did a meniscus repair. And one of the things that they had me do, like right after the surgery, was start physical therapy. I mean, the very next day. And I remember lying there on the physical therapist table. And they, they did a simple exercise, like raise your leg off the ground. And I remember, like, I consider myself a pretty strong guy. And I couldn't even lift my leg off the table. And I remember how bad it hurt. So that, like, the physical therapy, there was such a high level of pain with the physical therapy that I couldn't even get my head around, like, pushing myself through. Which, of course... Uh, you know, I ended up doing a hybrid version of it, uh, something where I was incorporating my own approach as well as the physical therapy approach to move my body through that. But from the sense of pure physical therapy, the strategy is to strengthen the muscles and the legs to support the knee joint, which in and of itself is very good intention and it's a good idea to have strong legs however it's also important to understand that there are no muscles in the legs there are only tendons and ligaments in the legs the next time you go to your doctor your physical therapist they have one of these um uh, muscle anatomy charts that are on the wall look at the knee joint and in the, on the muscle anatomy chart It'll have the muscles in red and the, the tendons and ligaments in white or tendons, ligaments, bone in white or like gray. And when you look at that chart and you look at the knee, there are no muscles in the knee. There are only muscles around the knee, around the knee joint. And that's what I believe uh, that there's many there's lots of gaps in a strict approach of physical therapy and understanding that just strengthening the muscles in the legs are going is going to make the knee pain go away. The last approach is 
waiting out so that the, the knee heals. Uh, that you're kind of laying there, you're doing rice therapy, which is rest, ice, compression, and elevation. That's your standard physical therapy protocol for waiting out and, and getting the body to heal itself, which ca it can be beneficial. However, what I see over and over is people are either waiting it out, not doing anything, or doing physical therapy, which is causing more pain for their knee. And there's nothing in between. There's no gap. There, there's, or actually, there is a huge gap that is not being filled in terms of how can we create the conditions so the body heals so we go from sitting on our butt, not doing anything, to full-fledged physical therapy. So we need to, to look in that place. Um, the... We, we have to understand that from a strict approach of what is suggested, um, the, the Tylenol, Advil, Nuprin, the uh, prescription drugs, the uh, creams and gels and oils and ointments, um, physical therapy and waiting it out, just from a strict perspective, that isn't working for a lot of people. And you could see it by the number of people that are still in pain uh, weeks and months and years after knee arthroscopy. So we need to look at some steps that we can take that are real solid and real fundamental for what the body needs in order to heal what's going on in the knees. Uh, the first piece we need to look at is in what I work with all of my clients with is homeopathics and specifically the homeopathics uh, Tremil. Uh, Tremil comes in both a tablet and a gel or cream. A homeopathic is different than a, a synthetic chemical because in essence what the homeopathic does is it engages the body's reflexes. It engages the nervous system to tell the body to produce what it needs to address the pain, the swelling, and the inflammation. So every time you take a homeopathic, it's actually making your body stronger. It's actually encouraging your body to deal with what's going on in the knee better and more efficiently and more effectively. And this is not only beneficial for the initial injury, for the surgery, and, and while you're experiencing pain after the surgery, but also on into the future. It makes your body more resilient. And that's what we're, well, at least that's what I'm really looking for, is that resiliency in our body, teaching our body how to heal faster. So by using uh, these homeopathics, Tremil, the tablets, the, the gels, the creams, and using it both topically and sublingually, what happens is it engages the body's ability to heal itself faster and recover quicker. Now, it's not only just taking these, these tablets or putting this gel in the knee. We also have to look at what the body needs in order to heal. The, uh, what, what is so crucial. And when we're talking about pain in the knee, especially after knee surgery, is the body needs water. And this is going to sound like a very insignificant point. But what happens is, the body is supposed to be made up of 80% water. And when we're dealing with pain in the knee, the nervous system is the connection between the knee and the brain that receives the signals that indicates, oh, the knee hurts. If we don't have enough water, we begin to delay the signal for the body to shut off that pain cycle. 
the water provides for all the systems in the body to work, for the body to heal, for the body to clean itself out, for the body to repair damaged cells, especially from the injury and from the, the subsequent surgery. Your body needs the resources in order to heal that. And if we are not drinking enough water, then the body doesn't have the resources in order to make it better. So we had the, the first step, which is uh, homeopathics, tremeal, taking it both uh, topically and sublingually. And then the second one is water, increasing your water intake. Now, ideally, what you want to have is your body weight divided by two in ounces of water per day. That's very important that the body gets a sufficient amount of water. Now, the third point, the third step in that you want to take after uh, arthroscopic knee surgery is you want to look at your diet. Once again, we go back to the resources the body needs in order to heal the knee. And if we're eating lots of processed foods, lots of foods with uh, preservatives and additives and colors, uh, foods that have lots of sugar in it, foods that it takes the body a lot of energy to process, what ends up happening is th there's less resources available because the body needs to take time to process those uh, those food products that you're eating and there's less resources to heal what's going on in your knees. You can think of your, your body very much like a computer system. And if you're surfing the internet, you go on different websites and there'll be cookies that'll be put on your computer. Cookies not meaning food, but cookies meaning computer programs. Those computer programs take up processing space on your computer for your memory. When your computer is trying to process information and it has to run those cookies as well, your computer will run very slow. Now there's really nothing wrong with your computer, but you have all these resources going to run these cookies and nothing to run the program that you want to run on your computer. Very much the same way when you're, uh, when you're eating foods that it takes, uh, it taxes the body in order to run it. So by reducing these foods, eliminating these foods from our diet, eating foods that are fresh, uh, live, organic, local, um, free range types of foods that are live, that are in its whole form, that don't have a label on it that says what's in it. These are the types of foods that are going to give the body what it needs to heal. Now, I want to give you three, uh, actually four herbs that are going to be amazing in order to add to your diet, incorporate into teas or into what you're cooking that are amazing for reducing uh, inflammation and swelling and speeding up the body's ability to heal. Now those four herbs are rosemary, turmeric, green tea, and ginger. Rosemary, turmeric, green tea, and ginger. And these herbs, what happens is when you take them in, in the form of a tea or uh, put it in your food, what happens is those herbs help heal those uh, the inflammation that is created in our intestines as a result of the diets that we have eaten. Um, and sometimes it's not even from the diet. A lot of times we can have inflammation in our body as a result of stress from the surgery stress from the worry and concern that has developed in our body as a result of the injury and not knowing what was going on and then realizing we're going to need a surgery and all of the stress that goes along with it and stressing about how are we going to pay for the bills and, and things like that. So we have to take 
the whole body into consideration and give the body what it needs to support what it needs to heal what's going on. And so we want to eliminate those things that are causing inflammation. And we want to add those things in that helps heal inflammation. So you're healing inflammation in your entire body, and it's also supporting the healing of what's going on in your knee because you've had a, had a trauma from the initial injury and the surgery. There's swelling and inflammation from the actual incision that went in into your knee, and we have to begin to set up the conditions in the entire body. This isn't just the knee. The knee just doesn't hurt on its own. The knee hurts the entire body. It affects our mind, our body, our emotions, um, our spirit, how we feel. So we have to take all of these factors into consideration. So this is, um, before we get into the questions, this is how my approach is. Uh, when, when we look at the knee pain guru process, for eliminating pain. And we've touched on some of these components, but in, in its entirety, we have to look at three steps. We have to look at mindset. We have to look at those beliefs. We gotta get the mind right. Because if the mind's not right, we have fears, doubts, concerns that affect our body. We gotta get the head in the game so we can play. So the first step, in my process is getting the mind right. And then I look at water, nutrition, and breathing because these directly affect the nervous system, the water, the nutrition, the breathing, because the nervous system is the source of the pain that you feel, the pain in the knee. No matter if you had surgery a couple of weeks ago, yesterday, or it was several years ago, it's still the nervous system is affected and we have to look at the body on a nervous system level in order to get the leverage that we're talking about to be completely pain free. Remember the, the quote that I said in the beginning that was, you can go to the ocean with a teaspoon or a bucket. The ocean doesn't care. In the very same way, you go to the body with a teaspoon or a bucket. The body doesn't care. We have to have that expectation that the body has a capacity to heal itself. And if we're only going there with this little hope that it can only heal a little bit, then that's exactly what we're going to get. So the first step was mindset. The second step was water, nutrition, and breathing. And the third step is comfort. And this is the highest leverage part of the program, of my approach. And when we talk about comfort, we're talking about directly affecting the nervous system by getting the pressure off of the tiny little nerves that are causing the pain, sending a signal to the brain that there, there is pain. And comfort is the fastest, simplest, most effective way of getting the pressure off of the nerves in the knee and optimizing the body's ability to heal what's going on in the knee. I was having a conversation the other day with someone and they were asking me questions about my approach. And what I really, I, I just, I was thinking through because the questions were really great. And they were, they were asking me about, well, could I figure this out on my own? Could I do this on my own? And I was like, well, I suppose you could. But what I realized I'm really teaching in this approach is we can't intellectualize getting out of knee pain. It's not logical how to get out of knee pain. We have to feel our way to get out of knee pain. To experience the level of pain that you feel today, there has to have been days and weeks and months and years that we've ignored how we felt. We've ignored the signals that the body has given us, that the nervous system has given us saying, you know, 
take a break, take a rest. Don't do this. Don't do that. It's going to hurt. And what ends up happening is when we ignore that over a period of time, the body um, amps up the tolerance. It increases it. The, the pain gets more, but the body compensates to suppress that feeling of what's going on. And then it ups it a little bit more. And then it suppresses it again. Until finally, it gets to a level where the body can't ignore it anymore. It's like the straw that broke the camel's back. That little bit of pain that was just added to the stack finally is so much the body can't handle it anymore. And now no matter where you go and what you do, you're feeling pain and pain and pain and pain. And this is where the wisdom of this process taps in to the knowledge and understanding your body has to heal itself. And without that, without that feeling component, without tapping into what your nervous system is telling you, how to get out of pain. We're, we're, we're relegated, we're left to doing sets and reps and hoping and wishing the pain will go away. When we look at the body and learn how the body functions on a deep enough level, then we get it. And we have those tools that we have the rest of our life. And that's where this approach is, knees for life. That was my idea of having knees for life. That this isn't just about getting out of pain now. This is about getting out of pain, learning in the process, and making sure we have strong, healthy knee joints to last the rest of our life. Because what's happening now, the patterns that we're seeing, is that it's a, it's a cycle of pain management. Pain management is an actual strategy. It's a business model of pain management. And you go through that cycle long enough, and the knee begins to wear even more. And then finally, one day, you're having a conversation with your doctor that you, you know your arthritis has gotten so severe, the situation is bone on bone, and you're a perfect candidate for a knee replacement surgery. And when I found that out and realized that when I dislocated my left knee four times, I was on that track. And if I didn't do something different, that was going to be me when I'm in my, well, I'm now in my 40s, but in my 50s and 60s, that I'm going to be having conversations with my doctor of the, about the pain in my knee and what we could do. But we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, I do have a I have some questions that I've gotten over the past week that I want to go over, and these are great. These for are from uh, Nice for Life Inner Circle members. If you are not a member of the Nice for Life Inner Circle, it's uh, something you want to con uh, definitely get involved in. I'll leave a um, a link in the description section of this video. Uh, the question is, how does kinesio tape work for your knee in the pain? And this is interesting because the kinesio tape, for those that don't know, it's like stretchy tape, like um, an ace bandage. But they tape it on the knee in a certain way that supports the kneecap or the knee joint in a way that is, helps alleviate the pain. And it functions in a very similar way as my program does, that where we find comfort. However, kinesio tape, you can think of it like the kinesio tape is a photograph where my program is the movie. So the kinesio tape will take a snapshot of how we can create comfort in the knee. However, when the nervous system responds and it shifts, then the kinesio tape doesn't necessarily feel so good anymore. And we would have to utilize it again every day or as the nervous system shifts, which can take place in an instant, uh, continue to change that. But if we understand how to hold our knee in a position of comfort, then we can support our knee in 
a place of comfort at each step of the way. And what we focus on expands. So the more comfort we focus on in our knee, the more comfort expands and it creates a new reality for our knee as well as the rest of our body. So that question was from uh, Spencer. Um, I don't have uh, like where anyone is from, so this is uh, what we're working with right now. Um, I have another question here from Emeril. I just had surgery done last week. Is it common to have uh, small, severe amounts of pain in the thigh? Uh, common? I don't know if I'd label it as common. However, that's how the body compensates for pain. Uh, it, the injury, the compensation. The injury, the compensation. And when the body has surgery, even though the surgery is there to repair the damage, repair what was going on, it's still a trauma. And the body responds to that trauma by tensing up. Just like if you stub your toe. Your whole body moves away and tenses up from the, uh, from the stub toe. Your body also compensates when it has a trauma from an injury or a surgery. One of the places it can't compensate for is in the thigh or down the calf or in the foot or in your hips or in your lower back. So we never know where the tension is going to move to. We just need to know that in the same way the body does injury compensation, injury compensation and tenses up to protect itself, we can also reverse that process. We can go comfort <laughs> and comfort and comfort and comfort, and pretty soon comfort is the new reality for the knee. So, um, Emeril, I hope that explains what's going on as far as what's going on in your thigh. And there, there could be issues with it in the muscle. There also could be issues with it in the fascia. Uh, there also could be issues in the bone. And each of those levels my program addresses. So you, if you're able to begin to articulate how it feels, and you're doing a good job there, once we zero in on exactly how the pattern is holding in the body, then it's pretty simple on how we can create comfort in there and move the body to a place of um, ease and support the body's ability to heal. Um, let's see, I got a question here from Fabian. Um, tore his ACL playing basketball, kept on playing, um, and after going to the physio uh, who misdiagnosed the knee, as being a bad bruise, did two more tears to the lateral meniscus. Then, um, let's see, I'm going to try to translate this. I have two, uh, there's a 1.2 centimeter meniscal tear on the posterior horn of the medial meniscus, which uh, is not having too many issues with it. Um, I'm also experiencing some knee clicking under the kneecap. I'm wondering if leaving all three tears is a good option long term. I'm assuming it is better than a, a partial meniscectomy, which would be a, an arthroscopic surgery where they would go in and take out the parts of the torn meniscus. So Fabian, here's a, here's a really cool, cool that we could talk about is that we can do two, two approaches. One is we need to repattern what caused the tears to begin with, the tension patterns that are going on in your feet, your ankles, your knees, your hips, your lower back. When we begin to relax those patterns that are going on that caused those tears to begin with, then we can look at nutritional protocols, like we were talking about earlier, as far as um, optimizing the body's ability to heal what's going on in the knee, uh, eliminating the inflammation in the guts or in the intestines, and then that frees up the resources so the body can heal the knee. It actually frees up the stem cells that the body produces on its own to go heal what's going on in the knee. 
so uh, that would be my approach. I think as a, as a long-term strategy, I don't think you have something that's, that's terrible. Uh, just like when I was uh, sharing with you about the client that um, emailed in and she was saying that her ACL completely reattached. After a couple of years, it completely healed. And she was really excited about that. So I believe that the body has the capacity to heal itself, but we need to give it time to do so, and we need to set up the conditions for that to happen. So, um, you know, I, that would be something. That's why I start with the mindset with my program. If you tore your ACL playing basketball and you kept on playing, even when there was a lot of pain, a lot of times we need to look at the mindset because the mindset can actually keep us in a in a place of being a hurt for a long period of time and actually doing more damage in the long run. So um, here is a question from Herman. Uh, I fell off my bike two and a half months ago and the knee is still swollen. I have no fracture, but the doctor says you might have hurt the delicate muscles. I can feel the fluid above my knee and a little below the knee. Is it normal that it's still swollen almost two and a half months after the injury? I have pain too when I stand for a while and knee gets locked and I feel hesitant to bend. So that's a really good question. And I go back to looking at the body as a, um, what you're dealing with when there's persistent swelling and inflammation in the joint. The body's lymphatic system, that is the garbage collectors, get, it gets clogged up. Like the body's ability to flush itself out is hampered by the tension that the body is holding on to. It, it, you think of it like um, if you take a, a mouthful of water and then all of a sudden you hold your neck real tight, it's going to be really hard to swallow that water. Same thing is you have the, your lymphatic system that is trying to clean out the dead cells and the waste products that your body produces. If you're, you fell on the knee two and a half months ago and your body tensed up to protect itself, that tension is causing what I refer to as like a kink in the garden hose. And that's the inability of the body to flush itself out. When we relax the tension in the joint, when we create the conditions so the body can flush itself out, then the swelling goes away actually quite quickly and quite easily because we're not fighting the body to do what it wants to do naturally. We're honoring the body's ability to heal itself. We just need to look at it on a deeper level. We need to have a deeper understanding and a deeper awareness of what's, what's happening. So that would... That would be my, you know, as far as if it's normal, uh, it's it, apparently it's normal for you. However, it's not how it's supposed to be. It's not how the body, the body can be, the potential. Remember going to the body with a teaspoon or you're going to the body with a bucket. I want to go to the body with a bucket and I want to get the potential out of my body. The, the, the ability of my body to express itself so I can enjoy life, so my quality of life is good, and I'm not hampered by the, the, the hurdles that are put in the way that are preventing my body from healing. There's no reason for it. Okay, another question here from Honor Guard, 88. This pain only happens on one knee and it starts cracking like my knuckles when, um, when I'm at the movies. Uh, is there something wrong with my meniscus by any chance? And this is one of those things that you have to go to your doctor. This is like a fundamental thing about anytime you have a knee injury, make sure you go to a doctor because you're essentially asking me to diagnose what's going on with your knee. I don't do that. That's a doctor's job. That's a doctor's responsibility. Uh, what I would do if I were you is I would make an appointment with a uh, contact a local professional or uh, college sports organization 
in my area and find out who they who their orthopedic surgeon is, who they send their athletes to. And I would make an appointment with that orthopedic surgeon because that orthopedic surgeon one isn't going to need the work. They're they're plenty busy, and they're high, they come highly recommended. So they're going to be a really solid orthopedic surgeon, and they're going to give you good advice. They're going to be like, okay, here's my deal. You tore something, and here's your options. Or there's nothing torn, and in that case, then I'm your guy. Then you come and you work with me because at that point, nothing is broken or torn. We know that the knee is mechanically sound, and we can help. The, the program, the process is the My program and the process works. It works every time I work with a client and they fully commit to the program and do what I say initially and then do what I do because this is how I live my life. So that would be that would be the approach. Uh, next question is from uh, Saul. And he wants to be able to squat again. He hasn't been able to squat for months and has been skipping leg day for a while because of the knee pain. Okay, incomplete question. Incomplete content. I can't give you a good answer. So that it's really helpful if you go ahead and tell me a little bit more about what's going on with the knee so then I'd be able to help. Because without that, um, I'm, it's kind of like uh, I'm kind of groping in the dark, guessing what's happening. Um, I, I don't know what happened, uh, what the diagnosis was, or anything like that. A uh, question here from Jamie McDougall. Uh, Hi, guys. I had a chronic knee pain on the outside of my knee for over six months. I've seen numerous physios, and none seem to be helping. I don't run, uh, but do strength training. It's greatly af affected my training. The bottom part of the squat is very sore with sharp pain on the outside of my right knee. Uh, my knee always uh, crunches and grinds a lot when I extend it back and forth. I can feel it when I place my hand over it. Any ideas what the issue could be? Any links you could share with me to help out? Okay, Jamie. Um, once again, this is you're kind of asking me for diagnosis. Uh, no, you're not. You did go to see physios. So my bad. Uh, the two places I'd look would be uh, at the fibula, the tension pattern in the fibula on the outside of the knee, and the, the meniscus. I got two stretches. Uh, let's see, the fibula stretch, the meniscus stretch in the virtual clinic, is module 40. I know that. And let me get the other, let's see. The meniscus stretch and the fibula stretch. This is coming up here in just a second. So those of you that are, are on this call here, this is how I work with clients. We're going specifically into my virtual clinic, and based on what what questions I'm getting, I'm able to go specifically to videos and work with those uh, specific issues that the um, that are being exhibited by where they say the pain is or the discomfort is. So the fibula, let's see, uh, the meniscus stretches. In the stretching lounge, the passive stretching section, module 40. And then, let's see. I'd also do module 34, the whole leg rotation. Module 37, the fibula float. Module 40, the meniscus stretch. And yeah, that would be it for now. And then based on how this changes, how this shifts and moves for you, we'll have an idea of what the next step is. And that's how we progress, focusing on comfort each time 
that the, the body then progresses to a new place and it may hurt, may feel better, it may shift, it may change, but that that's just information. We take in that information from the nervous system and that information is valuable to us in moving us forward. So, Jamie, that's what I would do. Um, once again, that was uh, the stretching lounge, past the stretching section, module 40, which is for your meniscus. 40 for the meniscus. 37, the fibula float. And module 34, the whole leg rotation. Okay, next question here is from Bob. Uh, what do I do if you can't lunge? I, uh, I can do half squats. Oh, why is this? I mean, if I do half squats, actually about 35% of squats, I have to turn my feet slightly out when I'm going upstairs. Okay. Um, I need a little bit more information to really give you an idea of what to do. But as far as like the lunges, uh, like you can't do lunges because it hurts. You can't do lunges because it limit you, you know, your, your body locks up. The, um, I guarantee you're holding your breath when you're doing them. Uh, holding the breath uh, limits the movement. I definitely look at water because uh, sometimes the tension in the body is created by the lack of water. The body doesn't have enough water. Um, and then I'd look at the tension in the knee joint. So I'd go to the passive stretching section, modules one and two, as far as uh, increasing the range of motion in the knee joint. And then I'd also do modules, um, da, 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 da. modules. Twenty two and twenty three for your hips and your lower back. Because many times what happens is the lack of mobility in the knee joint is not actually coming from the knee joint. It's coming out of the hips and the lower back. Many people just they, they get short sighted um, in terms of looking at why the knee isn't working and they need to look further upstream, which is in the hips and the lower back. You free up the hips and the lower back, and now the muscles and the legs are able to engage. Also, in the glutes are able to engage the butt, and now the the knee is able to bend. So that that would be um, something I'd look into. Okay, real quick before we wrap up, I just want to share some of the the people that had some amazing results this week. Some of the clients that had amazing results as of working with my program. Uh, this was from a, a gymnast. Uh, thank you, it worked. I hurt my knee uh, last Tuesday at gymnastics. I do pretty hard gymnastics, so that means I land hard and it has been working. Thank you so much. Uh, here's someone else that's been working with my program it, entitled uh, Talk Tennis. Uh, thank you so much. Been having pain in my knees for a few days now. I had a tournament coming up. And I was scared I wouldn't be able to be at my best. Uh, this helped heaps. There was a, a Matthew uh, Grunska. Uh, what a great video. I uh, tested the before and after. Uh, literally most, if not all, pain was gone after a minute. This really works, guys. Um, and then uh, Johnny shared, uh, just did this to my sore left knee, uh, Strained, he's a martial artist, uh, strained at the judo tournament eight weeks ago, never felt right since, um, and then got a knee in the thigh at a Krav Maga class three weeks ago, domino effect on the knee, um, has a bad back as well, but the knee has been, <laughs> he's been screwed um, as a result, an awesome technique, uh, feeling relief, thanks. Uh, So that's um, so. Here's your call to action now. Here's what we need to do next. For those listening to the call, set up a time to speak with me. 
set up a time where we can talk about what's going on in your knees. The, your knee doesn't have to hurt. Your, knee, your life doesn't have to be stuck in this uh, spiral of injury, pain, compensation, injury, pain, compensation. And it just becomes a downward spiral. So there's some things we can do that we, we map out a strategy. And this isn't, I'm not saying my approach is going to be the approach that you need to do. Obviously, if there is something broken or torn in your knee, I'm going to point you in a different direction. It, what, it's what needs to happen. It's for your best interests. There's plenty of people with knee pain, believe me. Um, so I want to do what serves you best. I want to do what supports you best. And in doing so, everybody's happy. Everybody's taken care of. But what I'm going to do is below this video, I'm going to put a link. And all you have to do is click on that link. It's going to take you to an application page. You fill out a real short questionnaire. It's going to give me an idea of what you have going on with your knee. Uh, you know, your, uh, your frustrations, what happened to your knee, your commitment level. That's going to give us an idea of where we're at. And then, then you'll be taken to a registration page where you input some financial information. This uh, makes sure we have uh, the most useful time we, with each other. I've had a lot of people who have made times to speak with me that just didn't show up on the call. So I'll ask for some credit card information. We'll get you set up in the system. And then you'll be led to my online calendar. You pick a time that works uh, for the both of us at the times available, and then we'll meet on a call. If you're international, we talk on Skype. If you're within the United States, North America, uh, Canada as well, that we'll, we'll get on a phone call and we'll figure out, you know, the strategy for you. And I'll point you in the direction best that I know how. I'm drawing on the past 15 going on 16 years of experience since I dislocated my left knee. So I thank you so much for being on the call today. Uh, I, I, this, this is my life's work. I, I love this stuff, and I love seeing people that are able to see the potential in their body. And it, it really breaks my heart to see people um, go to go to the ocean with a teaspoon. <laughs> that they're they're not seeing the potential that their body has to heal their knees. So I want to share that with you. I want to get my message out. So um, thank you so much for allowing me to do my work and, and be of service. Uh, the next call we're going to have is going to be on, this is going to be in February. It's going to be February. It looks like it'll be February 8th at 2 p.m. So until then, be well, take care of your knees, and take care of each other.